today, okay? But just because of that, that doesn't mean we won't let old guys talk and we'll talk more about their, their stories than, than today's stories. But when you guys get old, that's when you can come back and tell your stories, okay? So, and, and you'll find out that you're not um, uh, restricted to exactly what happened. You can, it, it can be better than it was then. So, um, so um, one thing, we've got the uh, uh, 1980, the only uh, national championship team from Carlton. Um, a lot of those guys came back. Uh, Bill Hike coached them. Okay, I was going to try to call Al Carius and um, see if I could get him on the phone. Um, uh, Al Carius, who most of the current guys know, is a coach at North Central. Okay, and um, and uh, uh, Bill beat his team. You know, Al was coaching there then in, in in 1980. I think Al was probably coaching there in 1950. I think too. So, so uh, we'll we'll um, we'll go we'll go after those guys next year. Okay, we'll uh, we'll let them have one more one more year. This year, so um, so uh, the the first thing I'd like um, uh, the Carlton women's team to to stand up, the ones that from from today, uh, co conference champs. Yeah, gr great job once again. Um, there was an unfortunate upset today as the Carlton women beat the Carlton men 32 to 33, okay? <laughs> they got us last year too, but not next year. <laughs> so, um, and then can we have the uh, Carlton's men team uh, all stand? Guys. Um, I, when, uh, when the 1980 guys, when they did the same thing, they stood, st when, when they had them stand up, they probably didn't all have, like, shirts on or something, right? So, wait, is there a Jake here? Okay, all right. Well, that, that may come later. I'm not, I'm, I, I don't really know that story, but I think there's a story behind it. Um, uh, what I'd like to do is um, have a... Uh, um, Todd, do you want to come up? And and uh, what I'd like to do is introduce all the uh, the guys from the 1980 team. All of them. So so do you want them, do you want them to stand one at a time or? Well, how about everybody from that whole 79, 80, 81, 82 crowd? You'd all stand up. Okay, yeah. And then uh, I was specifically asked to tell the, the, the seven that ran at Nationals. Um, you want that list? Yeah, should we have Bill come up? Bill, why don't you come up? It has the story right there. That, that's from the Carlton yearbook. So as Mr. Hike uh, comes up here, um, why don't the seven of us come stand up here to give uh, Mr. Hike, a chance to say a few words. Um, the seven are Quinn Batson, Bill Herman, Bob Jacobson, Dave Waltz, Bob Pappas, Chris Beerman, and me. Okay. And, and Todd Schaefer. Okay. Um, we had the good fortune of getting really lucky um, that it was a year that North Central had a bad day. It was also a year following, the, the year before we'd finished third in nationals, and the, term, the team that finished second was Humboldt State. They moved to Division Two. So sometimes it's not about how well you ran, it's about who else showed up. We got lucky that day. Um, but the, Mr. Hike wanted to, to write a few injustices that happened in those couple of years, 79 and 80. This is long overdue, and, and 
and people of extraordinary merit and contribution should be appropriately recognized, and we're trying to remedy this today. To start out, I'd like to have Doug Simpson, who finished 30th in the meet in 1979, come up. This reflects a change in the uh, system under which the Coaches Association uh, acknowledges all Americans each year. And it used to be uh, only 20 or 25, something like this, and it's 50, uh, 15 at first, and it's gradually increased. So what we're trying to do is get some r retroactive uh, uh, recognition on this. Uh, and we're even thinking forward about the future, too. Uh, the next one, and you can start walking now, please, Dave. Uh, <laughs> Dave Waltz, 36th in 1979. <laughs> right oh, my God. From the 1980 team, Bill Herman, 35th. Well, this is certainly nice. A little revisionism. Oh, that's good. Uh, that's good. Uh, there you go. Take that one. Right. Again from the 1980 team, Bob Jacobson, who finished 39th that day. And we're also taking nominations for people in the future because we soon expect to see it'll be the first 50 or 100, and, and we want to make sure that these people are not uh, neglected along the way. So if you have any nominations, please just uh, write them on the program and leave it at your table, and we'll throw them away later. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> somehow I got, I got nominated to give you a little bit of a, a reminiscence of, of what the team was like back in the late 70s and early 80s. Um, so I thought about giving an elevator pitch for doing this. So how many of you in the room know what an elevator pitch is? Okay, good. So hopefully none of the young ones know, but basically it's something in business where you're, given, you're trying to pitch something to somebody very important during an elevator ride. So you have 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute. Well, this is not going to be an elevator pitch. Um, it's, there's no way I could encapsulate what Coach Hike means to us in, in that amount of time. But first of all, uh, I do want to congratulate the 2018 MIAC championship teams, both the men's and the women's teams. And, and I think um, one of the things that I would would uh, say about that. It's not just about the seven who happen to be lucky enough to be running at the front of the pack uh, or at the middle of the pack or the back of the pack, but it's about everybody on the team. So all of you really should be proud of what the teams did today and give yourselves another round of applause. All right, so you heard I'm Dave Waltz. I'm one of the tri-captains of the uh, 1980 cross-country team, along with uh, Robert Frosty Bob Pappas, <laughs> uh, to my immediate right, uh, who earned that nickname for running the last four miles of the 1977 national championship race that was held in about 30-degree weather uh, after six inches of snow covered up all the mud that had been there the day before. Uh, and by the time he finished the race, he couldn't actually feel, I think it was his right foot, is that correct? Um, and so he named the, he earned the nickname of Frosty Bob. Uh, and the other one of our tri-captains is uh, Robert uh, Jake the Animal Jacobson, uh, who's four over to my right. Um, 
And uh, he is, uh, the way he actually got his nickname is he is indeed an animal. So he showed up at our preseason training camp. Uh, I don't know if you still have the preseason training camp. It's like a week or two before. Yeah, I'm seeing some nods. Uh, so he showed up then. Uh, we were freshmen. Uh, and he was determined to keep up with Dale Kramer, who was coming back for his senior year, having just won uh, the national championships as a junior and would go on to win back-to-back -back national individual championships. So he was determined to keep up with him on those preseason training runs in the heat in Minnesota in August, going on for 15 or 20 miles. And he actually did it, uh, to the surprise of all of us. In the first meet in September, he was right up there. He ran fantastically, and then, of course, he was injured, and he was out for the rest of the season. <laughs> um, but where was I? Oh, yeah, I was, I was, I was going to talk about Coach Hike. Uh, I think all of us would acknowledge that, that Coach taught us a lot. Uh, he taught us about teamwork. He taught us about discipline, and he taught us about ourselves. Now, I'll, I'll try to um, share some of, of that. So we learned about teamwork during the, the pre-workout strategy sessions and bullshit bullshit sessions, basically, that I'm sure you guys still have today. Um, we learned about it during the long, seemingly endless rides through the Midwest cornfields going to exotic places like Grinnell, Iowa, or Appleton, Wisconsin. Um, but most importantly, we learned about it during experiences like ice bowling on the Cannon River. So I don't know if any of you ever heard of that. Um, so it, it actually it, it requires some serendipitous occurrences. First, you have to find a bowling ball down by the bridge at the end of the arb. I'm sure you all know where the bridge is. I have no idea what the bowling ball was doing there. But then you have to decide to bowl it back up the frozen Cannon River to the stadium at the end of your run. I would caution that you watch out for thin ice because if you don't, you might find yourself competing in the teeny weeny contest <laughs> that would take place shortly thereafter. All right. I'll let that one sink in for a little bit. <laughs> but it was through these shared experiences that we were able to form a bond that carried us through not only the cross-country seasons of the late 70s and 80s, but through the years and even to today as, as evidenced by the number of people who came back, uh, as you saw when we were standing up. Coach also taught us about discipline. Through his insistence that we take pay close attention to our pacing and running within ourselves. Being patient and looking at the big picture always, not just focusing on what was in front of us, but where we were trying to go. He always wanted us to run as a group. He kept telling us, I want to be able to throw a blanket over you uh, and know where you are. And in fact, at the Nationals in 1980, if he was standing out at the half mile mark of that race, he could have thrown his blanket over all of us because we had seven of the last ten spots in the field <laughs> at that point. But we had a strategy. The first half mile was flat, and yet it was the rest of the course was filled with these punchy little climbs that were seemingly endless. And he had sent us out to Nurse Strand, uh, the Nurse Strand Woods, to do some fartlek intervals, sort of prepare ourselves for what we would face in Rochester, New York, up those hills. So we knew how to charge them. And we made up a lot of places passing people who weren't ready for that after their half mile flat out effort at the beginning of the race. And then there was a, a, a time during that race when our actually our uh, Carlton skills came into to effect. Because we had been scoping the course out the day before uh, during our sort of preview. And we had noticed that about halfway through there was a particularly steep and narrow section of the course that basically narrowed down into a bottleneck. And that was going to be a real threat to our ability to power our way through the, through the field and come up um, with a win. And so what we had spotted was that through this scraggly line of bushes on the left, there was a parallel path that was basically going to be untouched. So when we all each got there during the race, we basically dove through those bushes and we had a clear path to the top, passing everybody who was basically stuck behind the other people who were struggling up it. <laughs> no, I was very careful to say that it was part of the course. We did not cheat. <laughs> and and he, he did a great job of keeping us focused on the big picture. I think Todd had mentioned that we'd finished third the year before, and the, the top team from the year before had moved up to Division II. Uh, they won that. 
so we knew we had potential. We also were crazy deep. We had uh, probably seven uh, of us that had run, had cycled through as being the number one runner during the during the year, and ten of us cycled through the top seven in the last three meets of the year: conference, nationals, uh, and regionals. So we had a lot of people who could pick up the slack. And then, even though Frosty Bob was injured uh, during that race, and Quinn, unfortunately. Uh, had a, a disastrous GI bug that struck just that morning and was basically prostrate. Um, we were able to come through with the, the rest of us, run as a pack, run our own races, pace within ourselves, uh, and win it. And all year, we kept focused on nationals. Uh, we kept it really low key. In fact, we only run, won three things that year. We won the conference championship, the MIAC, which I think we won something like nine times in a row. Uh, we won nationals, of course. That spoiler had already been, been there. Uh, but most importantly, we won the Car Who Shoe Race. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now, at, at the risk of overstaying my welcome, uh, before I close, I'd like to provide you with a few hikisms. Uh, so those of you who are uh, deprived of being able to run for him and, and be around him through the vicissitudes of being born in the wrong era can appreciate some of what we uh, do about him. So we were waiting for the scores to be tallied at nationals. Bill Herman went up to him and asked him how he thought we might have done. He said, oh, I don't know, third, second, maybe better. <laughs> After the trophy presentation, he hustled us off to the rental van. He said, all right, guys, let's get out of here. Let's take the hardware before they retally the scores. <laughs> When we arrived back at the Minneapolis airport, he turned to the conquering hero, national champions, and he said, okay guys, here's 10 bucks each. Go splurge at McDonald's. <laughs> and finally, the classic hike quote, uh, one which all of us know well, and one which I think applies, uh, which he's probably applied to each of us at some point, and, and which we probably have applied to ourselves at some point. Poor bastard. <laughs> He's his own worst enemy. <laughs> so as I, as I peer back through the foggy mists of almost four decades, it's clear that the most important thing that Coach taught us uh, was about ourselves, whether it's running four miles through 30 degree muddy slush, having last place nailed down a half mile into the national meet. Who has the teeniest weenie? There's still some debate about that to this day. Maybe we should ask our wives. Or realizing that we were indeed uh, poor bastards who could be our own worst enemy if we don't recognize that and prevent it. He helped us see us for who we really were, a ragtag collection of individuals who could come together as a team and form bonds that last through the years, well beyond just the time that we spent together and with him. And whether we ever won a national championship or whether indeed we ever won anything at all was really quite irrelevant. And for that, coach, decades and generations of Carlton runners salute you. Thank you. Um, and, and while they come up, I just wanted, the, Mr. Hike, the main thing he would want is the attention to be taken off of him. So I want to take it off and thank Dave and Donna Ricks for allowing us to crash this party. Um, but I also wanted to offer a bit of fashion advice 
Um, because I know you have even bigger fish to fry, bigger meats coming up. As Dave mentioned, you have the Carhu shoe race coming up. So to help you with that, we'd like to see you sporting these Ooh. later this week. Sounds so good. So good. Thanks. Thanks. So good. That Do we have somebody? Here, hold on. Let me get out of the way. She gets. What, why do you hold Bill up over your head? That's one of my tricks. <laughs> Th thanks, guys. Um, remember, keep, keep eating. You can, I didn't think there was much eating going on then. If I'm talking, you should be eating too. So um, we have um, um, another thing. We've got a, somebody's got a, a letter to read. Um, did, Mike, did you want to speak first? And then um, for some, some of the current guys on the team, um, I, I'll tell just real briefly about Mike Steiner. Um, you may have seen him because he came, uh, he, he's been on campus a little bit. Um, after Donson broke uh, Mike's, uh, I don't know, 75-year-old school record. Is it, I, I, I'm, I may be off on the numbers. So, um, but, you know, 40-year-old uh, record, Donson broke his indoor mile record, okay? Um, um, Mike still has the outdoor mile record, uh, the stadium record. I, I think he ran 404-1. And there was one attempt to break that recently, about maybe 10 years ago, the 1980 team tried to break it in a 16 by 100 meter relay, and they uh, and they ran and they ran one second. It was at midnight, and some of you guys don't remember. Okay, you guys were wearing clothes. Okay, all right. And some the story's changing already. Okay, but I was the official timer, um, so they broke it by about a second. But unfortunately, after they ran it, I told them. That was 1,600 meters. Steiner ran 1,609. You have to take another shot at it. But there are about four guys who had pulled hamstrings, so, they, so, so Steiner keeps the record. And then Donson's graduated. So we may have some youngsters that may not be intimidated by this. But, uh, but, but anyway, uh, here, here's Mike. Mike Ste so it was good. Donson got us to reconnect with uh, a couple of you guys. Donson got us a chance to reconnect with Mike, uh, just, like, uh, hold on, just like Matt Wilkinson. Um, got got me to reconnect with Steve Hogue, so thanks. Um, so here, yeah, that, that's uh, so, some of the old guys mo might know Steve Hogue. Um, he was an assistant coach at Matt Wilkinson, uh, competed at Minnetonka High School, and um, he was one of the assistant coach that, coaches there. And he passed away last year um, from from a lung disease. So, um, but here, here on a happier note, okay, I'll give you Mike Steiner, okay. Well, thank you, and congratulations. To, yeah, thank you. <laughs> the mile isn't run very many times, so I'm, I'm, I'm lucky in that regard. But um, I want to congratulate the men and women's teams. I was uh, so thrilled and honored to see you run uh, this morning or afternoon. It was really, really great. Um, these are just some scattered um, memories of uh, Coach Bill Hike, my a lifelong mentor. You know, the things I'm going to say about him, I'm sure, are true for all of you in this room. Um, he has had such a deep and positive impact on my life. Um, and I just, I'll never forget the day I met Coach Hike on a rainy September um, afternoon on the Laird track. I was 18 years old. Um, it seemed to rain forever that season. And now, 53 years later, um, I'm here to honor Bill Hike, and we've kept our friendship going all of these years. It's, uh, he, he's been, in many ways, like a second father to me. Not that I needed another father, but he, he, really, uh, he really has, has filled that. Um, he's, he's been that to me. So 
um, allowed me to pull the best out of me as a runner. I, he's probably done that to all of you. Somehow his um, easygoing, relaxed quality, um, there was no intensity. Um, he just, uh, just somehow I flourished with his, uh, his, his, his way of, um, you know, just, just pulling the best out of me. I have a few memories, and I'll just, I, I, th this is not polished or prepared, but just a few memories of, of Coach Hike. Um, road trips to Chicago, um, uh, running in Stag Field, the Stag Field House, in the conference cross country meets in Washington Park. Um, Bill would introduce me to, um, to famous coaches like Ted Hayden, right? Ted Hayden at Chicago. Um, he, let's see if I can come up with some of these. Fred Wilt, stories about Fred Wilt, the famous uh, world record holder in the straightaway mile. Have any of you ever heard of this? Um, your your uh, FBI agent, right, Fred Wilt. Um, Bill would tell me about Hal Higdon, the famous marathon runner and writer who was your classmate, I think, Bill. Hal Higdon. Um, Bill Bowerman. B um, Bill would come to uh, practices saying, I've just talked to Bowerman. This is what I'm going to ask you to do. And uh, I hadn't heard of Bill Bowerman at this point. This was way back in the 60s. So... Um, Jack Scott, another running guru. Am I right at Oberlin? You would tell me about him. Um, Ted Hayden at Chicago. I maybe mentioned him already. Uh, I went to um, the indoor finals, indoor championship in Detroit, and that was kind of a highlight, and I got to run against Jim Ryan. You know, there I was standing next to the world record holder, all because of Bill Hike. I'd never been on an airplane in my life. I was that naive. and. We flew to Detroit and ran in Cobo Hall. And then a couple months later, we went to the Central Collegiate meet in Bowling Green, and I got to run against Sid Sink. Um, I don't know if he's a, a name to all of you, but that's where I ran my mile that was just mentioned. And so all of these things were just, um, oh, another track impresario, Tom Ecker. Do you remember Tom Ecker, Bill? <laughs> and you introduced me to him, and he was this kind of, track impresario character. So you really are established in this whole circuit and you are a real legend. And we were so lucky, we still are lucky to, um, to have you as our friend and mentor. And I could go on and on, but I think I will stop here. And um, I, there's going to be um, something from a, uh, Peter, you're gonna read a letter. So. Thank you, Coach. You've meant so much to so many of us. Thank you. So um, Todd called Doug Simpson and I. Um, Doug and I were the co-captains the year before, so they got rid of us and they won the national championship. <laughs> and um, it was a wonderful thing because Todd didn't know the people who came before him, and I got to reach out to them. Uh, over the last week, and I have some wonderful letters from them, Bill, that I'd love to share with you. But one in particular was from a guy that doesn't always respond to our emails, and that was Dale Kramer. And um, Dale couldn't be here, uh, but he wrote a letter to you on this day, and I wanted to read it. When I received the email confirming this announcement and the special naming honor, my first reaction was a smile, and the thought, just one more thing. I believe the phrase depicts the life journey of a beloved coach who touched the lives of many young men navigating an education intertwined with long distance running. Each one of us today could add just one more thing to the list of accolades bestowed upon your illustrious career. I had the honor and privilege of participating in a few of those things with you. I cherish the list of experiences that you made possible. The catalog of shared events includes driving team vans throughout Wisconsin, running hills of Dundas, the Drake Relays, and numerous NCAA events. From my perspective, the culmination of years of coaching all of us in the 1970s peaked in 1980 with a cross-country team that won the NCAA Division III title, national title near Rochester. I will never forget that day as we watched a group of Carls do something we had never done before. Again, it was just one more thing. 
While there are numerous public events shared by all of us, the events that I treasure the most stem from the daily workouts on the Hill of Three Oaks and the half-mile intervals on that grassy knoll. Your stopwatch and clipboard were training tools that constantly reminded all of us how you implemented a systematic and philosophical methodology for the development of hundreds of Harriers. Your interpretation of Arthur Lydiard's groundbreaking training techniques proved to serve you and your Harrier as well as we explored doing just one more interval. Thank you, Coach Hike, for modeling something that goes beyond coaching and initiates a style of living that is sustainable throughout our life journey. Today we are celebrating just one more thing in a long list of highlights as Carleton College bestows this honor on you. Your career at Carleton and your involvement in the lives of so many of us exemplifies a passion for the success of others that runs deeply. Today we have the opportunity to thank you, honor you, in this very appropriate naming event that will remind all future Harriers at Carl Carleton to look for just one more thing. Um, what, what, one more thing. Um, uh, we've got a couple other things. We've got a little video we're going to show um, that, uh, that was made by a uh, former men's cross-country runner. Um, the uh, other thing that I've always said, we've always thought about succession planning since I've been here. And I've always told Bill I wanted to keep him on as assistant coach because if something happens to me, then I know he's ready to take over the head job. You know, we, we've been kind of preparing him. So what I wanted to do was we're naming the, this naming event. We're naming you the new head coach for cross country because I no, Oh, all right. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure out some, some other way to do that. So, um, um, Laura, Oh, Oh, it's, stop sneaking up on me. Um, so th this video was put together by a, a men's cross country runner. Uh, is this Meeks Brucker's video? For those of you who never met Meeks, which is most of you, he is probably most well known. After he graduated, I, was, I kind of was bummed because I was always on for being on time and that. And all of a sudden, next year, everybody was on time. Everybody did what we said. And I said, this is boring. You know? so, so since then, we've started recruiting a different level of people who are, who are more. If you even look at the hairdos, uh, you can tell that we've, we've expanded out there. Um, but anyway, Meeks is well known for... Um, uh, a friend of mine stopped and said, I saw some of your guys walking on the road up on Cedar Avenue. He said, I stopped to ask him if they wanted to ride, and he said, no, they're going to the airport. Um, they decided at the end of, I believe it was fall term, that they would walk to the airport. So, so the joke was you could tell the Carlton Cross Country guys, they're the ones that had the uh, carry-on luggage with the, with the wheels that were only about a, the size of a dime by the time they got But they actually walked to the airport. So, and they said they got about an, they're about an hour faster than they expected to. So, so. But anyway, this is a little uh, uh, something that Meeks put together. I was uh, born in Owatonna and raised there and in Minneapolis. Came to Carleton as a freshman in 1949. Uh, I had two brothers, half brothers here ahead of me. And um, uh, then I graduated in 1953. Uh, at that time, uh, the Korean War was phasing down, but still there was a draft. And uh, I wanted to do anything to avoid uh, uh, going to Korea, even in the, in the semi-peaceful state. And I was in naval aviation for four years, and then uh, uh, during that time, for reasons that I've never fully assessed, I decided to look into uh, coaching, either high school or college, which I did. And that was in 57, 58. And um, I was brought in to be a football coach, and they said, you might have some additional duties, and, and uh, uh, that was fine. They said, oh, you got to coach cross country. And I said, God, I've never seen a cross country meet. I don't even know what to do. And they said, well, that's easy. You tell them to go out and run, and then you show up on Saturdays and make sure that the meet goes off. And so the first cross-country coach meet I'd coached, the uh, first team I'd coached, was the first one I'd ever seen. And uh, then just stayed around, and, and uh, at that time, I think they kind of gave out uh, tenure unless you'd assaulted somebody in the ball spot. And, and uh, I also had, had another sphere of, of uh, ignorance in which I spread myself, and that was coaching ice hockey. Uh, and... Uh, which was a, a, a humbling 
element of Carlton coaching at that time because if, if cross country was easy to coach because we attracted lots of kids that were prone toward that, hockey was a disaster because we attracted very few, relatively few Minnesota kids. We had a great goalie uh, who got a terrific workout every game and lots of practice and that was phased out and I was allowed to then spend more time on indoor and outdoor track. With Coach Hike's increased focus, the cross country program flourished into a national powerhouse culminating in a surprise 1980 national championship. Outside of the Carleton bubble, Coach Hike was somewhat of an ambassador, engaging in cross-cultural coaching opportunities. In 1964 and 65, uh, I worked for the State Department uh, as advisor coach to the Egypt or Egyptian or UAR track and field program, which was uh, kind of a goofy Cold War uh, anachronism, perhaps. Uh, or strange, strange vestige of the Cold Wars when uh, the communists and the, and the free world were sending people out in all kinds of cultural exchanges. Uh, but it's a terribly poor culture. Uh, and and uh, the athletes were largely affluent people, young professionals, uh, a lot of army officers and air force officers among them. With one exception, both of you will get a kick out of this, uh, the one ignorant illiterate element of the track team were distance runners. And uh, they collected this poor godforsaken bunch of truly illiterate soldiers out of the army who had done well on forced marches and uh, brought them into the national training headquarters. And, and uh, invariably, though they, they were, they seemed strong relative to their peers, lots of them had uh, intestinal parasites and stuff brought about from living in the the infected areas of the Nile Delta and, and uh, the Nile Valley and, and uh, so they once you put them up against people of normal health and normal nutrition they weren't worth a damn uh, in terms of endurance so they had to try to treat them and find the ones that were healthy and keep them around for the national team. It was totally different than our culture, a much different ball game. In 73 we took the one sabbatical that I, that I took in 27 years and coached in rural Portugal uh, for a year. And it confirmed uh, my experiences in Egypt in terms of dealing with different people and, and different situations. Uh, uh, think of being a distance runner where the roads are so narrow and so dangerous that you can't run on the roads. Uh, and there are no big pastures or big parks to run in. And how do you train distance runners under circumstances like that? It was a most enlightening kind of experience. After athletic director stints for 11 years at University of the South and one year at St. Olaf, Coach Hike ultimately returned to Carleton. With the great kindness of uh, Billy Tarikas and, and uh, Dave and Donna Ricks and, and uh, Leon Lunder, I've been able to help out with uh, track and field here during this time, which has just been an absolute blessing to me. I love the associations, I love the sport, and being around people who's... Uh, Concerns are not uh, arthritis and strokes is damn pleasant. Next Division Three Cross Country Championships. Enjoy. NCAA Championship Cross Country on ESPN. Today, from the Duran Eastman Golf Course in Rochester, New York, it's the Division III Championship. NCAA Cross Country is brought to you by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Rawson, and welcome to Rochester, New York, for the Division III Championships. It'll be my pleasure to host for you this exciting event. Today, you'll see a course more similar to European-style cross-country running than anything ever seen on American television before. The hills are extremely steep, the course is muddy, and parts of the course some coaches actually describe as dangerous. As one coach put it to me, there's probably four places along here where you could actually lose a shoe. So the runners in 35 degree temperatures on this championship five mile course have their work cut out for them today. 24 colleges will be represented here, and we expect the team championship to be very close, closer than North Central, who's won four of the last five years, has experienced during their reign, if you will. I'm with Bill Hike, the winning coach from Carleton College in Northfield, Minnesota, and his team 
And you uh, pulled a surprise here today. Yes, yeah, surprising us as uh, much as anybody, I think. Did you feel you had a chance to win? No, we, uh, we knew that uh, the man who's been our number one runner most of the season was hurt, and another one was a little bit ill, and so this was a pleasant surprise. Uh, we came in hoping people would just run their best. Your Midwest region, one of seven that the teams here competed in to get here, uh, is the toughest of all seven regions, and you finished third. Uh, you know, were you surprised at, at how well you did overall today? I mean, did you think you'd maybe finish second or third if you weren't going to win? Yes, we, we thought that, and we thought if people ran well, we'd certainly be in the top five, and, and then after that, it's so close that anything can happen. Has Carlton ever won an NCAA championship before? Only one that I know, which is an individual uh, NCAA golf champion, not a team championship. What happens to Carlton from here? Where, where do you, your team go? End of the cross-country season? Oh, yes. Yeah, we're, we're through right now. We're, we're finishing our fall quarter, uh, fall term, and our exams right now, as a matter of fact. Well, that's an even a great tribute to have to study for these exams and pull this off. You're going to go back as heroes, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. out of school. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Don and I wanted to thank uh, Bill for coaching with us. Um, you know, um, like I said, after he uh, retired from uh, Sewanee and uh, Gail and Bill came back up to Carlton, you know, uh, Bill Hike tricked him into, I mean, Bill, Bill Tariquez, who it's too bad he couldn't be there. For, for you young guys, if you need some characters, we'll, we'll bring Bill Tariquez in for a, his own show, you know. So, um, but, um, but yeah, so, so he got Bill to come back and then, then we tricked Bill when Gail and Bill weren't going to go to Florida one, one winter. So we uh, talked to him doing that. And then we had him coaching javelin throwers. And I think we had him coaching some middle distance runners. I think he told me, man, I'm coaching more events than I, than I was when I was uh, the, actually the head coach. So, but, uh, but, but Bill's been great to, to, to have around uh, the young men and women. And, and we, we told me we always want him here as, as long as he want, wants to be here. So um, did you... Um, we, we were going to um, introduce, uh, um, should we have the whole Hike family come up? Yeah. Here, here, just so you know, my wife, I'm like a puppet right now. And my wife's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but, but I'm, I'm, okay, I'm okay with that. So. Who, who's the talker? Okay. Hi, I'm Jay Hike. Uh, some of you guys may know me as Snuffy. <laughs> from way back when. Um, our entire family is up here. Uh, my nephew's uh, a girlfriend. Uh, my cousin Susan, T Tara, excuse me. My cousin Susan, my brother Tom, my wife uh, Tammy, um, nephew Anthony, uh, nephew Will, nephew Donovan, and my sister-in-law Kathy. Um, on behalf of all of us, I just want to thank you for this uh, it was fun sneaking up here uh, and surprising Dad. And uh, whoever the artist was who did the picture, I've seen that look. <laughs> I didn't want to see that look twice. <laughs> whoever it was, you captured it really, really well. And you're going to keep me from sleeping for a while. <laughs> In any case, thank you so much. Yeah, on on that uh, on that portrait of Bill that that hangs in uh, um, the dining hall, um, there was a Carlton student. I don't remember her name now, but Chris Marshall was a team captain and knew her, and and we had talked about uh, whether whether I could dig up some funding to uh, to do that, and I said go make it happen. And so uh, and so we were fortunate that we found somebody who could actually draw. You know, if 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 I would have done it, it'd be like a little stick figure with. You know, with hike with a big H on it or something. So, but um, um, but anyway, one one of the one of the things that um, this naming thing, Bill, you are not being named head coach. Okay, so yeah, so but um, if, but but what we'll do in place of that is um, so so we're we're gonna name the uh, the cross country course um, after Bill, and um, and so it's up behind the recreation center, and we're also gonna build the. Uh, like an awards podium, okay, that, that, that's going to be up there. Um, uh, my wife Donna has done a ton of work working to get this course developed. So it might be the course that Donna built, but, um, but, uh, but, Bill, but, but we think Bill is uh, um, um, fitting to, to have this course named after him. And, and, 
And, we're, and the other thing is, Bill, we thought if we named it after you, it would keep them from building other buildings on the course when we keep getting displaced. So, you know, so the course has been moved many times, so, but, uh, but yeah. Um, Bill, do you have any uh, uh, currently appropriate things that you could say? So, no. <laughs> this much of this, almost all of it, comes as a total surprise until a day or so ago. And above all, I want to thank the folks who uh, had the kindness to uh, put this together, and, and you've seen them throughout the afternoon, uh, Dave and Donna, and everybody else associated with it. And uh, thank you folks for coming, and congratulations on a great morning and, and uh, the St. Olaf Cross Country Course today. So thank you. Memorable time for me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so so um, we, we still have this place until 5, and I think some of the, uh, some of the 1980 guys are going to do something over at the over at the golf course um, um, afterwards. Uh, guys, uh, current guys, you're not invited, okay? Old, old guys, you're all invited, okay? Um, but, uh, but there still, stu still should be food, um, continue to eat or drink or whatever. Um, uh, a, a couple of things, um, you know, besides um, Donna, as far as naming this, Bill Tariquez was very involved, Bob, Bob Abbey was very involved. Um, there were a few other alums that, that were here. Um, there, there's, um, this is kind of, on the men's side, this is kind of a who's who of uh, Carlton track and field that, that are here. I know Doug Chase is here from California. Um, there, there's just a number of people. Le Leon Lunder, who was our athletic director for a long time, he's here. So anybody that's ever gotten a, uh, uh, Leon, would you stand up, please? So, so if anybody on the current team has ever gotten a congratulations uh, email, now, now you know it's not like uh, it's not some Russian uh, hacker that's been sending those to you. So, so yeah. Um, uh, so um, back at a table back there, guy in a white sweatshirt. Would you stand up? Yeah, you're the one. Yeah. Uh, this this jo Josh Shane. Uh, he's my assistant coach. Okay, uh, coaches cross country and. Um, he, he's, he's done just a great job with these guys. Um, I found him uh, when I became the head coach. It's hard to get coaches to come down from the cities during the winter and stuff. So I was trying to find somebody I thought that could be here for longer. Um, it's probably, I think this might be the 11th year now. Um, I found him in the results that he won some road race. So I started calling, and he was from Faribault, and I had never heard him. So I started calling. I got out a phone. This was phone book time. Got a phone book, called everybody with the last name of Shane. You know, I, I talked to Mary Shane, said, well, I don't know, you could talk to Apple, maybe it's one of her relatives. You know, nobody knew him. Um, he had moved into town there, and uh, he worked, worked at the uh, county courthouse. So I uh, called, and he happened to be walking by, and uh, they put him on the phone. We, we ate a Godfather's Pizza the next day, and I hired him then. So, um, but, but, but he's been great. It's great to have consistency in the coaching. Um, with Donna's assistant coaches, okay, uh, Laura, Laura Alberis, um, Laura, how do you pronounce your last name? Albaris? Okay, all right. Not. <laughs> not, not whatever, not however Dick Damon um, uh, pronounced it. Uh, I've, known, I've known Dick. He was coaching in college when I was competing, so I think he does it on purpose. But, but Laura, Laura ran here. Um, uh, my, my, fa my, favorite, my favorite story. Uh, um, from her, she was Laura Roach back then, um, but was uh, the conference meet up at Como Park, and she was really sick. I can't remember. Somebody else was two, two of the two of her top five were really sick, and um, and so uh, Donna said she talked to Laura, and she said Laura said she would drop out if uh, you know if 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 it's not going well. And I said, Laura Roach, 
Laura Roach at the conference meet is going to drop out of the meet. I mean, who are you? Do you have any idea? No, really, she told me what. I don't care if she told you what. If she drops out, she'll drop out and she'll chew up everybody's legs that come past her, you know. So, but, uh, but she was a great competitor, and, um, and it's been great having her, having her here. And then um, uh, Ruth Steinke um, is a, another assistant coach that, uh, that, that, ran, that ran for Donna and was an outstanding runner. And um, the, the three of them do a great, great job working together and, and have really, really built a great program. And, um, but, but we always know that it comes down to the, the athletes actually doing the work, you know. So, like, when some people were appalled by the fact that I would be dressed like this at a meet today, I said, I'm watching them. I'm watching my guy. I'm going to be sitting in this swivel rocker watching him run by, you know. So, so uh, the, 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 you know, the student athletes, they're the ones doing all the work. And, um, and ma'am, we got a lot of work done today. It, it, was, it was a great day. So, um, so, uh, so thanks to both teams for uh, – um, it, it's always good when you have it's, – uh, it's, it's always good when you're going to – it's kind of a win one for the Gipper thing. You know, like it's not good if you – dedicate something and you have a football team that gets gets pounded on the dedication day you know so so uh so 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 it's really nice to for you guys to to uh com compete at this level you know so re re really really outstanding so and and th thanks so much um ho hold on my wife is uh my, i can feel the puppet um uh, start to move so all right the hike family is now dismissed Um, yeah, I'd like one more group to stand up, okay? So if, if all of the parents um, of cur current runners would, would stand up, um, you, you, guys, you guys are the ones that have given, the, given these guys this opportunity, these men and women this opportunity. So, so with all the, I know there's more parents. I know there's parents here. Come on, stand up. Everybody else stood up when we asked them. So um, yeah, so 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 thank thank you so much for uh, uh, trusting us with your kids. Um, but like I said, you know, Car Carl's is a great place academically. When we recruit people here, we have no reservations, and and we want them to come here for the right reason. You know, to to be students, and and the running part is all bonus stuff. And um, and we have uh, uh, one uh, uh, Doug Chase. Um, Doug Chase also a, a great runner here. Uh, D Doug's, Doug's going to say. How about me? I, this is a toast I've been waiting 50 years to give. Uh, 50 years ago this month, I was a sophomore on Bill's cross-country team. Um, and I, I just, as I said, I've been wanting to give this toast for a long time. Bill, um, after all the honors and awards, um, responsibilities, um, after all the stories, some of which may even be true, um, I, I don't want to forget what a lot of these middle-aged men remember, and that is you came into our lives when we were vulnerable, when we were suffering the pressures, the academic pressures, the social pressures of Carleton College. Uh, we're a long way from home, some of us, um, and trying at the same time to be a competitive athlete. And you were there. You were our coach, of course, but you are a teacher, you are our mentor, you are a role model, and certainly Tarikas and I would agree with that, and you were our friend and have remained our friend. While we were going through Carleton College, you were our rock, our rock. Um, a lot of these middle-aged guys here were influenced by you at a very vulnerable age. And you guided us, and they learned lessons then that they've carried on into not so young age anymore. And as a group, we can't thank you enough for that. To Bill, to the coach. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't want to be just one more old guy 
who loves the sound of his own voice, but I, you can see I'm shaking a little bit. Uh, it's an emotional moment for me. I'm glad your, your family's here. This is really cool. It's really cool for me. So thanks. Stuck with the mic. Hey, hey man. Thank hey, you. Hey, 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 we, um, hey. Hold on. We don't do the handshake thing anymore. Um, thanks, everybody. Um, continue to talk amongst yourselves or, or whatever. Um, you can hang out. Um, and then I, I think we have to be out by, out by 5 o'clock. So, um, and then, uh, so have at it. If, if you need more food, I don't even know if there is any. I'm just pretending there is. So, so uh, uh, th th thanks, everybody.